laws are a means of purification. Us obeying Allah's law, every you know we learned this in, in many things of the Prophet ﷺ. We do a good deed, and some you know in the Hasanat you have to like Quran says, good deeds alleviate or remove bad deeds. Following Allah's law is an expiation for smaller sins. It gets those things out of the way, it purifies us. And so we have less burden to carry on Judgment Day. Literally, there's a heavier load for us to carry. So Allah says, Allah wants to lighten your burden. Not just in dunya, but in akhirah also, you'll have less to carry. You'll have lighter, you'll have lighter baggage that came with you, for as, as far as uh, sins are concerned. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ And the human being was created weak. It's beautiful that Allah mentions lightening a burden and then weakness. Because a weak person can't hold a lot, can't carry a lot, right? So this parallel is made between those two things. You're, you're weak, you can't hold that much. So I made sure I gave you something you can handle, it's easy for you. This is a continuation of what Allah said to us in the, at the end of Al-Baqarah. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسَعَى no, no person will be able, is, is, uh, Allah does not burden upon any person more than what they can hold, what they can bear, their wusa, their capacity, right? This is all of the ahkam are within our wusa, within our capacity. And the purpose of them is to make life easier for us. If only we saw it that way. We think of Islam or, or especially someone who tries to abide by the rules of Islam as someone who's very strict. You know, Muslim, Muslim. They're a little too Muslim. You know, or they'll say that's a strict Muslim. You ever see, you heard those terms? That's a strict Muslim. That's just that idea is the exact opposite of what Allah wants us to think. That guy is making his life easy. He knows what it means to live a, a simple life, an easy life. This is يريد الله أن يخفف عنكم وخلق الإنسان ضعيفا وكذلك نحن ضعيفون ضعفاء في الفهم أيضا. Where we're also weak in understanding. We're weak in understanding that this makes life easier, not harder. In تجتنبوا كبائر ما تنهون. This ayah is actually a very comprehensive ayah in terms of Quranic wisdom. The ayah we're about to study. This subject matter it comes up three times in the Quran. Once here, then we're going to see it in Surah Al-Shura. We're going to also see it in Surah Al-Qamar. And the subject matter is a sense of proportion. A sense of proportion in good and evil deeds. The idea, that this fundamental idea is in our religion, there are some big things we're supposed to just stay away from. Cheating in business, lying, riba, you know, rights, violating the rights of parents, fundament, you know, the prayers, zakat. There are some fundamentals where we have to, have to, have to abide by. You have to do them. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about them. Then there are things that are tahseen. They, are, they make you a better person. Right? And you, you shouldn't have them because they're character flaws. Maybe you once in a while you kind of say, end up saying something that's riba. It's not that riba is a small thing, it's a big thing. But regardless, it slips out without a person realizing it sometimes. Maybe a little bit of a white lie here and there. You know, just to get out of trouble. Smaller things. You know, maybe somebody didn't make their, their wudu properly. Maybe some, or you know, they were in a hurry or something. Maybe somebody wasn't paying attention in salat. These are day to day transgressions. Maybe somebody didn't lower their eyes right away. Right, they saw something and they didn't lower their eyes right away. And they were tempted to look again, etc. These are things that, that can happen on a daily basis. Well, there's a sense of proportion. The first priority in the life of a Muslim is to take care of the big problems. In tajtaribu kaba hauna. If you are to ward yourselves away from the major of what you've been forbidden from, the big stuff you gotta get out of the way. And then a daily struggle, once those are constants, like you wouldn't even think about the big stuff. Right, that's, you've, you've pr protected yourself from those things so well that you don't have to worry about that from a day-to-day -day basis. Now what can you concern yourself with? The smaller things. That are, that are the cr smaller crimes that are easily committed. Now you can focus your attention on those. Now let me, this is a good sense, a healthy sense of proportion. But what happens when there's a corrupted sense of proportion? A corrupt, uh, you know, a fasiq proportion sense. Then a person will be, they'll be, they'll be, they won't give their daughter their inheritance, and they're not gonna pay the mahab to their wife, and they're gonna continue to earn money from questionable sources of income, but they'll go to Hajj every year. But they're gonna donate lots of money to the Hibs program at the masjid. But uh, every time they come into Salah, they say, hey, you, your pants are too low. Your, your beard's not long enough. And they'll be ready for that immediately. But the big stuff, right under the nose, just slips right out, right? There's an Urdu expression, I won't translate it into Urdu, I'll just give you the English version of it. It's, it's talking about a stupid hunter. The stupid hunter spent the day running after the mosquito while the elephant escaped, right? <laughs> Sense of proportion, buddy. <laughs> you know, so what happens is when you're, and especially this is a, a criminal psychology, right? If you're, if you're really engaged in big, big sin, 
then you don't want to face that. You want to rationalize away from that. So you concern yourself with smaller deeds and make them your religion. That just becomes your, this is everything there is in religion. Everything else that you're violating, you conveniently forget about, never even bring up. إِن تَجْتَرِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ Then we will bury away from you your sins. Your, you can't keep doing your kabair. Now what sayyat is the day-to-day mistakes. Sayyat is the rest. إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذِبْنَ السَّيِّئَات Good deeds, get rid of bad deeds. They remove bad deeds. That's what's left on the day-to-day, the adhkar, the salawat. The, you know, the, the salam to one another, the smiling, the sadaqah, these things will get rid of the smaller mistakes that we do, that we're supposed to be working on anyway. But the kabair have to be dealt with ahead of time, the big ones. وَنُدْخِلْكُمْ مُدْخَلًا كَرِيمًا And you know, Allah adds on top of that, the fact that you were away, staying away from those sins, and you were worrying about getting your smaller sins forgiven, you know, a sinful person is also humiliated. Allah says, we will enter you into an, a place of entering that is noble itself. Only noble people enter through there. The entrance itself is nobility. Karima. It's noble. So, نُدْخِلْكُمْ مُدْخَلًا كَرِيمًا Another very important social sense of proportion. You know, Allah Azza wa created us differently. All of us. We have different heights, different weights, different ethnicities, different races, different intellectual capacities, different skills, different flaws. We all are just completely different. And most psychological problems people have, like depression, sadness, aggression, things, things like that, they, they come from them comparing themselves to others. Why couldn't I be taller? How come I'm so fat? That one's not fat at all. How come this one's so smart? I'm so stupid. How come they did this and I couldn't do that? This happens at the smallest scale. You, some kid's sitting in a hymns program memorizing Quran. Some kid finished, finished two juz in a month. The other kid's just finishing half a juz. Like, how come I can't be like that? I, I, I hate myself. And then parents don't help, right? They, they say too, why can't you be like that? Right? <laughs> They don't help either. <laughs> but there's this, you know, constant comparison of yourself to a co-worker, to a fellow peer, a college, a student, a cousin, a sister, a brother, you know, someone else in school, an athlete. Constantly comparing yourself to somebody and then feeling bad about, oh, I haven't, I don't have what they have. And if, I, if only I was taller, you know, if, I, if only I was this or that. These these things they can become they can become a real burden on a person. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Wala tatamannaw." Don't wish for. Ma fadl Allahu bihi baadukum ala baad. What Allah favored some of you with. What what Allah has favored some of you with uh, over others or with others, over others. Some of you are far smarter. You may be hard to look at, but you're far smarter. Some of you are very very good looking, but you're dumb as a brick. It, it happens, right? So there's there's different proportions. Allah Azza wa wants you to not wish for what somebody else has. He just wants you to be grateful for what you have. And the, the, the underlying premise here is, if you're wishing for what somebody else has, that means you have no appreciation for what you have. That's an antithesis to shukr. That, that goes against the very premise of being grateful. So, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوا مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضُكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِّمَّا مِمَّكْتَسِبُ And if there is something you should compare with somebody else in, is in good deeds. For men, there's only going to be the good portion of what they earned, in terms of good deeds, what they earned for Allah. If there's something to look at somebody else and say, oh, I wish I could do more of that, that's, that's time spent in doing good deeds. And really in the end, the real thing is time. It's nothing else. It's not the quantity of what you produce, how many students you have sitting in front of you, you know, how many people want to come to listen to your talk or whatever? How many people read your book or your article? It's not the quantity. It's the sincere time that you and I, in this limited, you know, adult life that we have on this earth, where we still have ability, where we haven't gone senile. This limited adult life that we have that we're answerable for. In this time, what did we pull off that was sincere time spent for the sake of Allah? Whether that was, you know, helping others or helping ourselves, doing ibadah, doing sadaqah, whatever it may have been, how did we make the best use of our time? This limited time that we have. That's all the competition really is in.